In this video, you'll learn what residuals are and how they're used to find the best fitting straight line in simple regression. You'll learn to use two formulas to calculate the intercept and the regression coefficient, and how to interpret their values. Suppose I want to predict the response variable popularity of cat videos, measured as number of views, using the cat's age as the predictor. I collect some data from online cat videos, resulting in this scatter plot. The question is, what line gives us the best predictions? In simple linear regression, we assume the relation between the predictor and the response variable is linear. So first of all, the line must be straight. Second, we get the best predictions from the line that produces predicted scores that lie as close as possible to the observed scores. So we need to find the straight line that minimizes the distance between observed and predicted scores for all the cases in our sample. The difference between the observed and predicted score for each case is called a residual, or prediction error. It's expressed as y sub i minus y hat sub i for case i. Earlier we saw that the general form of the equation is y hat sub i equals a plus b times x sub i. The predicted popularity score equals the intercept plus the regression coefficient times the age of the cat. So what values for the intercept and regression coefficient produce the best fitting line that minimizes the residuals? In order to find these values, we use the method of ordinary least squares. We take the residuals, y sub i minus y hat sub i, we square these residuals and we add them up. We square because otherwise the positive residuals, where the observations lie above the line, will cancel out the negative residuals, where the observations lie below the line. Now for the tricky part. We can express the sum of squared residuals as a quadratic function that we can minimize. Mathematically, this involves taking the partial derivatives with respect to a and b, setting them to zero, and solving for a and b. Now don't worry, you can ignore this bit of math. You don't have to perform the ordinary least squares method yourself, because it results in two simple formulas that you can use to easily calculate the intercept and regression coefficient. These formulas give you the intercept and regression coefficient values that result in the smallest possible residuals. These produce the best fitting regression line, also called the least squares line. The regression coefficient is equal to the correlation between x and y, cat age and video popularity, times the standard deviation of y, divided by the standard deviation of x. Suppose in our sample the correlation between cat age and video popularity is minus 0.700, and the standard deviations are 4.147 and 0.968, respectively. Then the regression coefficient is minus 0.700, times 4.147 divided by 0.968. Rounded off, this equals minus 3. Looking at this formula, you can see that the regression coefficient of x, used to predict y, is an unstandardized version of the correlation between x and y. If the correlation is positive, the regression coefficient is positive, and the regression line will go up. If the correlation is negative, so is the regression coefficient, and the regression line will go down. If the correlation is zero, then so is the regression coefficient. The regression line will be horizontal. Because the correlation coefficient is standardized, it's independent of measurement scales and lies between minus one and plus one, it's useful as a measure of strength of association. Take the correlation of minus 0.7. In the behavioral and social sciences, we consider an absolute correlation value of 0.3 to be small, 0.5 to be medium, and 0.8 to be large. So a correlation of minus 0.7 indicates a fairly strong relation between cat age and video popularity. In contrast to the correlation, its unstandardized version, the regression coefficient, is less appropriate to assess strength of association. This is because the size of the regression coefficient depends on the, often arbitrary, choice of scale for the predictor and response variable. In our example, the regression coefficient tells you how much the predicted popularity score will go down if cat age increases with one unit, in this case, one year. If we change the age scale from years to months, the regression coefficient will change accordingly, while the correlation stays the same. Finally, we have the intercept. The intercept is equal to the mean of y minus the regression coefficient times the mean of x. 
Suppose in our sample the mean cat age is 1.25 years and the mean video popularity score is 41.20. We just determined that the regression coefficient is minus 3. We just determined that the regression coefficient is minus 3. So the intercept equals 41.20 minus minus 3 times 1.25, which equals 44.95. You can see that this is in fact where the line crosses the y-axis, where x equals zero. An interesting situation occurs if the regression coefficient equals zero. Then the regression equation reduces to the intercept, which reduces to the mean of y. So the regression line is flat and lies at the mean of y. This makes sense. What if the predictor, cat age, is unrelated to popularity and doesn't provide any help in predicting it? Then what's your best prediction? Well, with only the variable video popularity providing useful information, the best prediction would be the mean popularity score.